bisa diceritakan tentang uh, masa kecil Anda? Iya, saya asalnya dari Jakarta, di Pondok Kelapa, Jakarta Timur. Uh, saya sekolah di SMA 31 Jakarta. Keluarga saya dari Batak, marga saya Hutapia. Ya, yeah, that's, that's it, I guess. Do you want to talk about your family? In America? Yeah. Okay. Right. My wife is a German. Her name is Christy. She uh, she works for uh, uh, Johnson and Johnson. She's one of the director there in the oncology department. My son Paul, he's 11th grade, right? So he um, he's about to go to college, right? Of course, Temple is one of the colleges he, he considers, right? And Lily, my daughter, is uh, in eighth grade. Because both of you are scientists, do you think they're, they're going they're going to be scientists as well? We don't know. We take it easy. Uh, what we emphasize at home is you just have to go study. But we don't know what they they, they want to do. We, we never put that on their on their mind. Lalu, uh, Anda lahiran besar di Jakarta, mm -hmm. um, kenapa memutuskan untuk um, kuliah di Amerika? It, it is, it's America, yeah. <laughs> it's the land uh, of opportunities, I guess. Uh, waktu kecil, uh, memang saya suka uh, teknologi, engineering. So, uh, saya pikir mungkin Amerika uh, lebih bagus, gitu ya. Tahun berapa? Um, uh, Pergi ke Amerika, lalu jurusan apa dan uh, di mana kuliahnya? 1991 saya datang ke Amerika, jurusan Aerospace Engineering. Uh, kuliahnya di, di North Carolina, tepatnya North Carolina State University, uh, Raleigh, North Carolina. Yeah. Kenapa memilih jurusan itu dan kenapa universitas itu yang dipilih? Uh, North Carolina State University, NC State. We call it NC State. It is one of the best uh, university in, in aerospace uh, at that time, and uh, I thought aerospace was was a good major. Yeah, uh, I was young, masih muda kita nggak tahu kan. Jadi pilih aerospace ya. Tapi uh, waktu itu kendalanya apa ketika baru datang dari Jakarta lalu kuliah di Amerika dan ambil bidang yang tidak mudah? Bisa diceritakan kendala-kendala? Ken, kendalanya um, pastinya bahasa ya. Uh, kendalanya selalu bahasa, you know, conversational English sometimes. So, susah uh, the first year itu kita ag agak susah mengerti ya. Tapi lama-lama uh, bisa menyesuaikan. Um, proses aplikasi dari Jakarta dan sebagainya waktu itu, siapa yang membantu? Waktu itu kan ada support dari Jakarta ya. Terus um, financialnya disupport dari uh, uh, Indonesian government ya yeah, at the beginning uh, untuk S1 saja, right? Jadi masuk ke NC State ya. Yeah. Setelah itu uh, ya yeah, graduate school you're on your own ya. Yeah. Uh, jadi sendiri gitu. Um, so how many Asian students at that time? Do you, mm -hmm. If you remember? Yeah, many, many Asian students ya. Yeah. Um, It was big at that time. I don't know how many, but at least hundreds uh, Asian students, Indian, Chinese, Indonesians. Uh, yeah, so. Lalu uh, bisa diceritakan soal um, S2 dan S3? Ya, yeah. S2 dan S3 saya juga di uh, NC State. Uh, ngambilnya juga lebih fokus ke mechanics, uh, mechanical engineering. Bukan ke aerospace lagi karena saya baru tahu uh, saya lebih tertarik ke mechanical engineering. Jadi saya uh, dua tahun ngambil master dan tiga tahun ngambil S3. Ya. Yeah. Yeah. Cepat sekali ya. <laughs> Because I I stay with the same uh, advisor, same professors for masters and PhD. Okay. And then uh, what do you like about Philadelphia? You can get a anything, everything in Philadelphia, and it's much smaller than New York City or Manhattan. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Kita sudah bicara dengan beberapa orang Indonesia yang sekolah di sini dan mereka banyak yang mengeluhkan perbedaan misalnya cara komunikasi antara mahasiswa dengan dengan profesor atau misalnya dengan cara pemilihan mata kuliah dan mm -hmm. sebagainya. Di sini kan dituntut untuk lebih mandiri. Mm -hmm. Di Indonesia mungkin uh, berbeda, agak berbeda. Itu dirasakan juga nggak waktu itu? Enggak juga, soalnya saya waktu dulu kan uh, uh, tamat tamat SMA jadi kurang begitu tahu sistem uh, sistem hmm. kuliah di sana 
kan? Jadi langsung adaptasi Langs di sini. Dengan langsung sendiri, adaptasi ya? di sini. Tapi memang benar di sini lebih independen. Uh, your own, your own. Uh, that's perhaps help me ya yeah, uh, untuk, untuk menyesuaikan lebih cepat gitu, uh, ke situasi di sini. Yeah. Kalau dari segi engineering sendiri dan uh, teknologi, um, apa yang bisa Indonesia pelajari dari uh, Amerika sekarang? Semuanya. <laughs> Uh, so, oh, oh, all of it. Okay. Bisa dicontohkan misalnya um, di kampus, um, di Temple University misalnya. Uh, so in America, uh, the the university is classified in a Carnegie Research uh, classification, right? So the research activity of university is evaluated based on the productivity of the faculty, oh, right? So. There is research one university, there is a research two university, yes. So Temple University is, belongs to the research one university, right? So it's, it's a heavily focused on research, right? Uh, so there are perhaps only about 120 university in America. You can name any one of the big university in America, and Temple is one of them in terms of the research activity. So I think if you ask me about what's good about Temple, I think I think that's it, right? It's, it's, a, it's a research focused university, whether it's in engineering, whether it's in uh, medical sciences, whether it's in psychology, whether in any 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 of those subjects, right? So it's a big university. Yeah, banyak sekali orang Indonesia yang kalau ke Amerika yang dicari adalah Ivy League, right? right? Dan termasuk juga pemerintah Indonesia dalam hal ini mengirim banyak sekali mahasiswa Indonesia ke Ivy League yang biayanya sangat mahal dibandingkan dengan right, right. public university seperti Temple. Apa yang perlu um, kita lakukan supaya masyarakat Indonesia mengerti bahwa public universities di sini pun sangat berkualitas? When I came to United States, I have no idea either, right? After I've been here for years, 10 years, then I understand, right? So you don't go to university in America just because you go to, okay, oh, I, I heard about MIT, or I heard about Harvard. You don't go there like that, right? As, especially at the graduate level. You have to look at what research that you're interested in, then go look the professor, whether, whether it is here in Philadelphia or whether it is in California. It's not so much about the university. Uh, and perhaps uh, that's because perhaps in Indonesia that's all you hear, right? That's all you hear. Uh, but here in America, it, it's, it's totally different. It, it's, it's what you want to study. It's more important than what school you want to go to. And I think that understanding is missing. Bagaimana kita menarik lebih banyak mahasiswa Indonesia ke Amerika dengan mem dengan mempergunakan jalur-jalur beasiswa, mm -hmm. lalu riset karena seperti tanpa sekarang kan mereka mengeluh mereka kekurangan mahasiswa Indonesia dulu banyak dan sekarang banyak yang justru larinya ke sekolah-sekolah yang mahal sebetulnya mm. ya. It, it, it's not what we can do around here. I don't know if we can do anything in my opinion, but I think it have to come from the students themselves to come to be aggressive, contact people, create connections, learn about the research, about what they want to study. Can you tell us about the, your baby, the, your research? The oh, okay. We've been doing research in, in, uh, in surgical devices, so we try different ways how to design and create this needle so that it can basically go in inside the human body uh, as effective as possible uh, with the idea that that this can be developed more for clinical usage right for the clinical applications uh, so that's what i've been doing in the last 10 15 years yeah yeah so um so you have to patent for that and if you are able to um replicate or make this um like uh, in a bigger scale, mm -hmm. do you think um, the hospitals, 
in America and then around the world um, are gonna. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the hope, but the hope, right? but we don't we don't know, right? So we we're still in the early stage, okay. right? Also, in still in the R and D process, and in the same time, try to commercialize this. That's the hope. So we receive support, like grant support and things like that, from uh, Department of Defense or National Science Foundations, and hopefully we can take this to the next level. The next level will be. Uh, Preclinical testing and then clinical testing and and hopefully this can be sold right to whoever interested in in this technology. Uh, apa um, soalnya kan anda ini apa sangat apa ya hebat prestasinya. Oh, oh ya, jangan jangan bilang nggak 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 hebat. Cepat <laughs> sekali menyelesaikan studi mm -hmm. lancar cepat itu kan tidak mudah apalagi engineering. Yeah. Ya, itu apa rahasianya selain tadi uh, uh, harus agresif. I think the most important thing is is you must like what you do. So the moment you don't like what you do, stop and find another job. That's what I will always tell my kid. It doesn't have to be engineering, it doesn't have to be anything. Anything that you do, you must like what you do, right? So so I think perhaps if you ask me the secret is maybe I like what I do, right? Uh, maybe I love what I do. It, it's not the money of it's a professor. You, you have money, but we don't have much money, right? I just love what I do, right? So when you love what you do, I think I think you'll be successful. I think I think that's the secret. So I like my job, basically. <laughs> yeah. And then the secret, another secret is also how to find the job that you love, right? I, I think it has to come organically. I think it just come naturally, right? Right. So, so when you go to school in high school, you know right away what you want to do, right? Lalu kalau soal orang Asia yang pintar-pintar di bidang engineering ya, yeah. uh, tadi mas tadi pagi mas uh, mbak mbak Yori kasih data bahwa soal STEM dan engineering mahasiswa Asia kan banyak sekali. Mm -hmm. Itu kira-kira apa uh, menurut anda? Kenapa? I think what I see. Um, the Asian students seems to have tendency to go into the STEM or medical sciences, anything that, oh, you want to become a doctor, you want to become engineers, right? From early on, the, the, the family said that's the best uh, field that you go to. Here in America, even with my own children, uh, I do, we don't do that, right? You can be the best of anything, right? Uh, the best chef. Right, you can be the best, um, whatever. Right, it doesn't have to be uh, engineers. It doesn't have to be uh, medical doctors, because that's not really what education is all about. Right, education is about going back to what I said. It's loving what you do. You can be the b best fisherman. You can be the best cook, and I think that's what I see here in America. Mereka mengekspor berbagai hal sejak kecil ya. Sejak kecil ya. Yeah. Kalau mengajar, oke, okay, anda kan sudah lama menjadi guru, dosen. Mm -hmm. Apa yang menyenangkan dari mengajar? Teaching is one of the best thing that happened to me. I happen to like engineering, and then when it comes to teach, it energizes me. I got so excited, right, to talk about the things that I love to do, right? So I will go in front of my students, try to explain to them the concept of engineering because I'm so excited about it, right? I hope that also make them excited about the subject that I'm teaching. So it's very enjoyable teaching students in the classroom. Um, that's why I teach in a university. Downside, downside of uh, teaching, like uh, some of the stuff that you don't like about teaching. Going to school uh, for students is challenging. What I mean by this is students have a lot of pressures, right, to go to school from their parents, from their friends, you know, peer pressures and all those things, right? So in a classroom, students who cannot handle the pressures, right, will have difficulties in learning. Mental health is a number one issue in America, and I think it's everywhere. Uh, I see those students that 
that have challenges and that have challenges because I know exactly what's going on. You know, it, it makes you sad, right? I wish you can do more, but there's only so much thing you can do, right? Especially during COVID, right? Exactly, exactly. Uh, especially during COVID and immediately after COVID, you can see that, right? There are a lot of challenges and it's very tough, right? But now it's getting better. Advice for young people uh, so they know how to choose the, the, the field that they love. Mm -hmm. Again, I'm, I'm going back to what I said earlier, right? Uh, uh, love what you do, uh, be true to yourself, remember where you come from, right? And using those three principles, I think you'll be okay. I think you'll be a successful person, no matter where, whether you're in Indonesia, or in America, or in Europe, right? If you love what you do, I'm sure you can do whatever it is that, that you want to do. I think that's, that will be my advice. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> huh? Menarik ya? <laughs>